Let's catch up with Nationals MP and former Resources Minister Keith Pitt joining us from Bundaberg. Good to speak to you, Keith. Of course, the Prime Minister was in the Sunshine State today delivering this monumental speech which worries me to my bones, Keith. This is another big government intervention. He's promising to use our taxpayers' money to, to, to uh, subsidise industries and hand out grants to create boondoggles for projects that should either succeed or fail on their own merits, right? Uh, Chris, it's another one that's been big on rhetoric and short on detail. But I tell you what, for every one of your viewers who are working in a galvanising plant or a foundry or a spray painting booth or, in fact, any other manufacturing workshop in this country that's not on Labor's hit list or on the priority list as part of the Green Dream, well, you're in all sorts of trouble because they don't care what your power price is, they don't care about your gas bill, they don't care about what their industrial relations policy from Federal Labor does to your business. They're only interested in the Green Dream boondoggles, as you've put it, uh, and I think that is very dangerous for our country. Well, if it's it a national security piece, Chris, well, I'm all for it. Sure, sure. And, and we all want to, to be more self-sufficient in this country. But the point here is that the two biggest encumbrances on manufacturing in this country, the two forces that have driven so much manufacturing offshore, are our increasing power costs and unre unreliability and, of course, the, the over-regulation of the labour market. These are the two areas where labour's making everything worse yet they're going to tip more taxpayers' money into what the, the, the solar cells or whatever else that they think that they can subsidise uh, to, to, to a new place in competition with China. It, it's, it's absurd. It has economic disaster written all over it. Well, you've got to target your strengths. Uh, and for our country, it's not competing with what everyone else is doing. It really isn't, because they do it better in places, unfortunately. They certainly do it cheaper in China. And the idea that our energy security is reliant on China, I just find abhorrent. I'm opposed to that, absolutely. But I uh, want all businesses to be successful. I want all manufacturers to be successful, Chris, not just the ones that are picked, hand-picked by the Albanese government that are likely to provide uh, extraordinary rates of return for what's most likely to be, guess what, union super funds, and, of course, Green Dream investors. Well, that's right. It's this picking winners uh, that's the real worry. And, uh, and the other thing that made me laugh today is he, he quite rightly points out our resources bounty. Uh, but the point is he doesn't want to use any of those energy resources in Australia. He, he doesn't want to use gas, coal or uranium. Yet he recognises these are our great bounty. So what other countries get to use them but not us. Well, that's exactly right. That's uh, why we're a great exporting nation, because others benefit off the back of Australia's resources. Uh, in Victoria, it's cancelling gas. No gas for Victorian manufacturing. They are going backwards. Uh, in Queensland, in particular, in the areas of New South Wales, it's around coal. Uh, we've seen royalty increases in Queensland that are now the highest taxes in the world on the coal sector. And guess what? They're cancelling projects. Uh, they're funding the Environmental Defenders Office, who, guess what? Go out and try and shut down resource projects, particularly offshore gas. Uh, and what are we seeing as an outcome? Well, we're seeing less investment and we're seeing countries like Japan literally and publicly saying there is now sovereign risk in Australia because the Albanese government cancels things that are already approved. Uh, they pull back uh, approvals for projects that are already progressed enormously. Look at what happened with Barossa and Santos. Look at what's going on with Woodside and Scarborough. Uh, these are multi-billion dollar projects that take years to develop and they have the rug pulled out from under them because there's an idealism inside the federal Labor government and that is only going to get worse, not better. Yeah, it's a hell of a worry. I want to show you a comment that I showed on the program last night. It comes from Jeff Dimery, who you'd be aware is the CEO of Alinta Energy. It was some refreshing frankness from him at the National Press Club yesterday. You came here for truths and straight talking about the transition. So here's a doozy. Australians will have to pay more for energy in the future. Yeah, but the government, Chris Bowen and others, keep telling us that electricity prices are going to go down. Who's right? Oh, well, I'll go with the industry expert because there's no way it can be cheaper. You can't build over a trillion dollars worth of infrastructure with guaranteed rates of return paid for by consumers without putting the price up. It's pretty fundamental. It's just a ridiculous proposition that it will be cheaper. It can't be. Yeah. It will cost more at a time when Australians just can't afford to pay, Chris. 
There's no doubt about it. And as Jeff Dimery says, whether it's through taxes or electricity prices or grants, whatever, we're going to pay higher prices. But he also had this to say when the proposition, the alternative of nuclear was put to him. Could you, if you started now, have nuclear in the market by 2035 or 2038? The answer would be yes. But again, no one's starting now because the legislation isn't conducive to us even exploring that. It's, uh, again, refreshing frankness there. I guess to this point, yeah, of course we could have a lot of nuclear power available up and ready, firing in this country within a decade. Uh, the great argument from the left is, is that it takes too long, but the only thing delaying it is the laws and encumbrances preventing it. So, uh, I mean, it's kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy for the left to say it'll take too long, right? We'll never forget, Chris, that the Labor government has lifted the moratorium on nuclear only in Adelaide to build nuclear submarines. They are investing in reactors. But in Britain, $5 billion of Australia's money to build a reactor for submarines for this country uh, that will provide logistics and supply chains in the UK for nuclear reactors. It will train apprentices and technical experts in the UK for nuclear reactors. Why can't we just invest that money here and get the outcome for this country and our people uh, and all of those kids who are coming through our system looking for highly paid technical jobs that the nuclear industry could provide them? I think it's absolutely inevitable and every month we waste is just another month we, uh, we handicap our country. Thanks for joining us, Keith. I appreciate it. Keith Pitt there joining us live from Bundaberg.